Hello everyone. So me and Barry have decided to do a series on how he was nurtured forward into spiritualism. This is just a first series episode, which is about the beginning, just a brief introduction. Um, this is just a pre-recorded message and I pass it on to Barry to speak through the live and it's going up on YouTube and the rest of the series will be covering various top um, topics such as like chakras, meditation, um, how he came into trance, the closeness of spirit opening up, grounding, all these ranges of things are going to be discussed in this series for the benefit of others. So I hope you enjoy the first one because I certainly did when it was um, broadcasted live. It's lovely being back on live again, able to come and talk to you. The last time, friends, a few weeks ago, I came on and I, I was talking to you and I was opening my heart, telling you how I felt and everything. And, you know, friends, I got so much response from people. It was unbelievable. But you'd be surprised how many of them turned around and said, Barry, can you teach us? Can you teach us the right way to connect with spirit? Can you teach us to become a medium? And I had to reply to them, no. There is not one medium that walks this earth that can teach anybody to become a medium. If the gift is there, if the gift is there, it can be nurtured. But when you hear these words, teach, 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 they cannot. They cannot teach you anything. And I'm going to explain to you, friends. I'm going to go back right into the early 70s. When I first went in to the spiritual movement and I came into the spiritual movement, I'd seen spirit all my life. I was brought up with what you call ghosts. And believe me, it was frightening because when you're told it's ghost, 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 you, you think automatically of ghost stories, the ghouls and everything else, and it frightens you. I'm going to explain to you, friends, so you can understand a lot more about me. When I was a child, the house I was born in, before it was converted into a house, was an undertaker's. And we used to see spirits come out the attic, out the cellar, pass us on the stairs. And every Friday, when it came to bath night, my mum would get the old tin bath and put in front of the fire. But she knew we were scared of the ghosts that we were going to see. So what she used to do was to put a brush up against the door handle of the cellar and of the kitchen door. And then we'd start to have us back. And then all of a sudden, the doors would open and then they'd close. But the brush, the mop that was pushed up against it, never moved. And we was terrified. And my mum used to say, don't worry. They're not here to hurt you. They're only making sure that you're having a good scrub and making sure that you're clean. And it did put it as ease, I'll admit that. But I was the second youngest of nine children. I was one of seven boys and two sisters. The two sisters had the little box bedroom. Mum and dad had one room and then the youngest one slept in between mum and dad and the other six boys top and tail in the one room. And I was always put right against the attic door. And when that door used to open and I saw spirit come out, I screamed. I screamed like any child would do. But my brothers didn't see it. So I used to get quite a few pastings for screaming out. And over the period of time, I learned not to scream. I cried in silence. 
And I used to see spirit come out of the attic and they'd look at me, walk past me, walk out the room. But this one particular night, there was a lady, a beautiful lady, and she walked past me, looked at me, saw I was crying, and she sat at the bottom of the bed and she placed her hand on my feet. And instead of screaming, instead of crying, I felt a calmness. I felt a calmness come over me. It was unbelievable. And, you know, she smiled at me. And after that, I weren't afraid. I wasn't afraid to go to bed. And to tell you the truth, it might sound up to some people, but I used to look forward to going to bed. And eventually in time, as she used to come and sit on the bed, she'd be talking, but I couldn't hear her words. And that carried on for a few years. And then I started to hear whispers of voices in my head. And the lady Terran told me her name was Agnes. And she said, you're a gifted child. There's not many that get to see us. You are very lucky. And as you go on your journey within life, others are going to come to you. Others are going to listen to you. Well, as I was growing, listening to these words, I thought, were well, a load of you know what. So I didn't bother. I didn't bother going in any direction of knowing about spiritualism and everything. But I'm going back to the early 70s now. And I went to work at a shoe factory. And I got talking to one of the ladies in the office. And I was telling her about how we saw the ghost, what was happening, what I was seeing, what I was saying, what I was feeling. And she said, Barry, you ought to go to the spiritualist church. I said, you what? She said, go to a spiritualist church. She said, there, they talk to the dead. I said, no, I ain't going to them places. I said, I don't see anything like that. She said, I'll tell you what. She said, me and you, We'll go on Sunday and we'll go and experience it for ourselves. Well, we did. We went off down. Tell a lie. Let me get the story straight for you. We were supposed to have met at Bourneway Spiritualist Church. And I went down and I stood outside the church. And five minutes before they were going to close the door, my friend didn't turn up. So I went in on my own, being brave. And as I walked through the door, there was a gentleman standing there. Black suit, white shirt, black tie, little dark moustache. And he said, can I help you, lad? And I thought he was an undertaker or ready to run out. And he could see I were nervous. So he said to me, he said, come with me. He said, I'll introduce you to a lady. He said, you sit there and she will make sure that you're all right. And he introduced me to a little old lady. And she said, sit at the side of me. And as I sat at the side, she said to me, do you know, lad, you're a natural. I said, you what? She said, you're a natural. I said, you what? She said, you're a natural. Pretending I wasn't thick. I turned and said, yes, I know, I've been told. And we sat there. And as we sat there, the lady came up on the platform, the medium. She opened up in prayer. We had the hymn. We had that of the healing. And as the medium stood there, all of a sudden I saw a little girl, blonde hair, pig tails, wearing a tartan dress. And I told this to the old lady at the side of me. She said, I can't see anything. I said, well, I didn't know they allowed children into the church. And all of a sudden the medium went, can anyone please take this beautiful little girl, blonde hair, pigtails, tartan dress, 
pulling on my skirt and the lady said to me, I told you you were a medium. Well, after the service, I got to admit I did feel comfortable. I felt quite at ease with it. And I was asked to go into the tea room and have a little chat with people, which I did. And this beautiful little lady, she said to me, she said, you should be in a circle. You should be developing. She said, but I'm going to tell you, it won't be easy. She said, because what they do is they do not teach you. They nurture you. They bring the gift out of you. And when they do, by God, they're very, very strict. They'll know whether you're speaking truth or whether you're speaking false, whether you're making it up. And I said, I'm not interested in anything like that. And she introduced me to another lady. And this lady said to me, she said, you know, she said, I see you. I see the energies all around you. She said, and you're going to be one of the best mediums. And I thought she would just be a bit, uh, shall I say, sarcastic in one sense. And she said, I'm going to have a word with a friend of mine who's a very, very well-known medium. And I'm going to ask him if he'll take you under his wing. And the week later, when I went back into the church, because I told you I loved it, I went in and this lady said, my friend, he wants to meet you. His name is Jack Corbett. And anyone that knows spiritualism would have known of Jack Corbett. He was international. He was an exorcist. He wrote books. He was one of the best. And I was given his telephone number and asked to phone him. And I phoned him and he asked me then to go to his home because he wanted to talk to me and to see how well I was developed. And I went into his house and he said to me, he said, I'm going to ask the young man, who do you see in my room? And I'll never forget the words. I said, there are many spirits here, but I see your mother, your father, your brother. I knew nothing about this man whatsoever. He said, stop. I said, oh, what have I done wrong? He said, sorry, I can't teach you. You're too advanced for me. He said, so I'm going to introduce you to another medium. She's a fantastic medium. And she'll be the one that will be able to nurture you forward in a true spiritual way. And I thanked him because he gave me the name, the number and everything. But I thought I must have upset him because, you see, I thought, did he think I was being too cocky with what I was saying, what I was seeing? Anyway, a few weeks later, I met this beautiful lady called Marjorie Backers. And when I talk about mediums, when I say I have seen the best, I have seen the best. She was one of them. And she said, I want you to come into my circle. She said, but I don't want you sitting anywhere near me. I want you sitting at the bottom of the circle. I said, why? She said, when people come into the circles, she said, we have very strict rules. She said, the circles that we run, we are looking for potential mediums. We are looking to help, to the, help those to develop, to become mediums that will work upon the platform within the church. And I said, oh, I don't think I could do anything like that. Well, anyway, I was invited to their Monday evening. And I sat at the bottom and she said, I want you to sit there and I want you to relax. And then I said, what do you mean relax? She said, I want you to relax. Well, anybody that knew me friends years ago 
My mind was all over the place. I couldn't relax. I was on medication, this, that, and the other, because I was overactive with the brain. I'll be honest with you. And I thought, this isn't going to happen. I tried to relax. I couldn't. And after the circle, a little old lady came up to me. She grabbed my hand and she said, young man, you won't be able to relax. You won't be able to go into meditation. She said, your mind is so full. It needs to be emptied of all the rubbish that's in it. And I said, well, how do I do that? She said, well, I'm going to tell you. She said, when you go home, all the thoughts that come into your mind that you don't want, think of a waste bin. And all those thoughts say, in the bin, in the bin. Well, I went away from church thinking she were a right nutter. I'm not going to lie to you. But I thought I'd give it a try. And I did. And for weeks, I found myself throwing all the things I didn't want in my mind out. And I found myself becoming more shall I say, calm within myself. And as I was going into the circles, I found myself understanding what people meant when they said, let's go into meditation. Now I'm going to explain to you, friends. At the beginning, I said to you, I couldn't. You see, there's a lot of people that come into the circles today. They say, let's go into meditation. It's not easy. It's not easy. You've had a bad day at work. You've had a row with the old man or the old woman. And then the kids have played up. And they expect you to walk into a church and just switch off. Impossible. So when I started to throw all the waste into the bin, I started to realize what they was trying to do to me was, first of all, to get me relaxed physically and mentally. Because as I progressed, I realized that to work with spirit in a true spiritual way, you have to be at peace with body, mind, and spirit. You have to be. And friends, I'm going to explain to you. Young Kyle has asked me to do this live today so that I can start to explain things to you in the ways of the old nurturing, not teaching of the gifted ones from our good old pioneers from years ago. Because friends, when I tell you of how they used to work, how strict they were, you will be surprised. But I'm going to leave that for another day because I am going to come back again and I'm going to slowly but surely speak to you about the true ways of opening up to spirit. But remember, the only ones that can open up truly to spirit are the gifted ones. Those that need to be nurtured, those that need to be shown the way forward. Because, friends, I'm going to leave it with you and you will understand why I'm saying this. No disrespect to anybody that runs a circle. They can only teach what they've been taught. I can only nurture what I've been nurtured with. There's a difference. And you know, today, it's all about what we can teach you. Well, I'm going to explain to you, friends, before I leave you. One sentence always used to come out. There's a slow train and there's the fast train. To be nurtured, you've got to board the slow train. If anyone wants to teach you, jump on the fast train. 
Now, friends, I'm going to leave those words with you. This is just the start of the beginning because I'm going to start bringing more towards you. And hopefully, with the words I bring over the next few weeks coming live to you, I will be able to help you and nurture you forward with understanding and hopefully give you an insight of how true spirit works with that of man. Because, friends, this is what it's all about, learning to connect with your loved ones in spirit, learning to connect with your helpers. Now, I could go on for ages, friends, doing this, but my friend says, keep it at a timing, don't go overboard with it. And he said, let them absorb the words you've spoken today so that hopefully they'll be interested in the next one to come. So friends, God bless you. And I hope that you will listen to those words. And I hope if you want to, and I say if you want to, friends, send some sort of comments and I will reply back to you. And I don't care if someone says, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing this. Well, I am doing it and I'm going to continue to do it because if I can help one person along the way, then at least I've shared my journey, but also knowledge to others. God bless you, my friends, and thank you.